Hope everyone uh, is having a wonderful time at uh, day two for Slush. Uh, I had a really nice time last night at uh, the dinners and the parties. I hope you guys did too. Uh, not too much fun though, so that you still have some energy to listen to this talk with me today. So, uh, my name is Karo. I am the head of marketing at Europe's leading micromobility company, Voy Technology. You can find our electric scooters and e-bikes across 70 cities in Europe. Um, we uh, are a Swedish company, but we do feel a bit Finnish. Uh, we've been here now since 2019. The Finnish people have taken over 7 million rides with our e-scooters. And only last year to this year, we grew with over 800% in the Finnish market. Um, so it's actually one of our best performing ones. And that's why it's extra fun for me to be here today in Helsinki to present to you guys. Um, did anyone ride an e-scooter to the conference today? Ah, yeah, someone in the back. Good for you. Hope you parked it correctly outside. Nice. So uh, for me, I remember the first time that I saw an e-scooter. Uh, it was back in 2018. Uh, my brother had bought one, one of those like uh, uh, crappy Xiaomi's, uh, the first uh, generation of e-scooters, uh, and uh, brought it to my apartment in Stockholm. I thought they looked uh, a little bit ridiculous, to be honest, but I was also super intrigued to try it. Uh, I tried it, I felt like the breeze and the wind in my hair when riding it, it felt awesome, and since then I ride an e-scooter almost every day. It's because they're convenient and it's because it's fun to ride. But mostly I like e-scooters because to me they symbolize something bigger. To me they symbolize the start and the catalyst of the green revolution when it comes to transportation. Um, and what do I mean with green revolution? Essentially saying goodbye to cars as we know them and saying hello to cities that are actually made for us, the people that live there, with less uh, space for cars, more space for green and convenient means of transport. And that's what we're trying to do with VOI. We want to create cities that are made for living, with less noise, with less pollution, with less congestion. Um, we want to have cities with highly integrated, top-notch public transportation systems in combination with micromobility hubs, where you can choose whatever uh, means of transport that you like or that you want. So, uh, um, since, you know, what we're doing, uh, having, having that opportunity to take public transportation in combination with micromobility is what's going to help you to experience the city on your terms. Uh, and you're going to be able to have micromobility at your fingertips. We're also challenging the model where about half of the space of the city centers is dedicated to cars. Cars that take up almost half of the space, uh, spitting out poisonous gas when you use them, and also standing still about 95% of the time. But micromobility is also about democratizing mobility, because when you use a shared service, you don't have to buy your own vehicles any longer, but at the same time, you get to experience and get access to the latest and greatest when it comes to technology. Since we launched in 2018 in Stockholm, uh, we started with 16 e-scooters. Uh, now, three years later, our riders have done over 90 million rides. And that requires a lot of growth. And that's something that I love doing, and that's also what I'm here to talk about. Building teams with brilliant minds to help people reclaim their right to mobility. And what do I mean with reclaiming the right to mobility? Well, essentially, everyone has a free choice to choose how they get around the city. But in order to be able to do that, you need to have those choices made available. And I heard a really nice story the other day. Uh, it's about a lady named Kath. She lives in Portsmouth, which is one of the cities where Boy operates. Um, she told one of our operations managers there that uh, she'd actually sold her car. And she'd replaced her car journeys with the combination trips of e-scooters, boy e-scooters, and public transportation. And that's what it's all about, that's what I love doing, and that's why I'm here today. But uh, I'm mostly here to talk about what a growth team is, how to build one, when to start building one, and how to go about it. 
So uh, I hope you guys want to join me on this journey. Growth teams are usually tasked with uh, acquiring new users, with building retention, uh, monetization, anti-churn, etc. And uh, this could be through either optimizing product or finding new marketing channels. For Voy, um, growth used to be just adding one more scooter out in the street. So, uh, you know, uh, growth equals uh, 10 more scooters in Helsinki, or it could also be launching a new city. And for some of you who are running startups um, here in the audience, it might mean adding, you know, one more client to your customer list, adding one more interesting product line to your verticals. Uh, and I think that way of doing growth is fine when you're a startup. But we quickly realized that if we want to create a micromobility and a green revolution, we needed to think about growth in a smarter way. So we looked into our organization, uh, and essentially, since we're a hyper-growth startup, everyone is working with growth in some way, right? But uh, we looked into our organization, uh, we took the people that uh, were working with growth the most, and we went from having a functional type organization to building cross-functional teams. So we went from functional organization to a business unit setup. And I'm here to talk to you specifically about how we set up the growth business unit, which is the business unit I've been leading for the last year. And, um, you know, before we had the business unit, uh, and we had like the functional setup, uh, we had marketing working on growth on their end. We had engineering working on growth on their end. Uh, product working with growth on their end. And, uh, you know, to be completely frank and honest with you, the communication between those teams didn't really work. And I think that's uh, probably similar in a lot of organizations. So what I can really recommend is start looking into cross-functional teams early on. And I think the benefit, really, of having these types of cross-functional business units is that you can become more flexible, you can make faster decisions, and get higher quality output faster. And that's imperative when you're a startup that wants to create a green revolution. But uh, every growth team also needs a mission. And it shouldn't just be, you know, grow the business. At Voy, the growth team's job is to get people on a scooter, um, make them go through the onboarding, make them add their payment method, and go for a first ride. Then our job is to make them come back again and again. But uh, it's also a bit more than that, because uh, we want to make sure that our users also make the connection between their transportation habits and creating a better world. Whether it means micromobility or public transport or the combination of the two, we want to make sure that they know that by getting to where they want in a safe, independent and uh, um, you know, convenient way, they are empowered to leave their car behind, perhaps even forever, like CAF. And that is really the key to the Green Revolution. And behind me here, uh, you're actually seeing a rendering that we've created um, of a street here in Helsinki. And please excuse my pronunciation now. It's Korkiavarvurenkatu, I think. Um, where we have reimagined and showcased what the street would look like if there was less space for cars and more space for, and better infrastructure for, micromobility. Yes, a little bit bumpy <laughs> on these cobblestones. <laughs> Uh, but I think um, what we really want to showcase here is, you know, what the city could look like with more space for people and less space for cars. And I know for sure that I wouldn't say no to cities that looked more like this. Um, but back to helping uh, our users make the connection between uh, their transportation uh, choices and a smart, sustainable world. So. To, to help our users make that connection, us in the growth business unit covers all parts of the customer journey. Everything from like top of the funnel awareness to acquisition, onboarding, retention, monetization, and anti-churn. That allows us to talk to the users and communicate to the users throughout the full customer lifecycle. And that is, I think, the key if you want to make them understand that by every choice they make, they are being a part of the green revolution. 
Uh, and in the team then, we have uh, a lot of different people. We have brand, we have CRM, performance marketing, we have engineering, we have product, we have analysts. So it's quite a big mix. And it's really like running a mini startup. And having that startup mentality can really help. And uh, before we had a growth team, like everyone in the company had a growth mindset, I would say. Like they still do, but we decided to gather the people that were working mostly with growth in the one cross-functional team. Um, but we have grown a lot. So we've gone from a thousand people. Oh, no, no, no. We've gone from one person to a thousand people at Voy uh, in the last three years. And that is also in the midst of a bloody pandemic. So growth has been really fast for us, to say the least. But from day one, we've known that we wanted to build something huge. And everyone that's been brought on to Voy has been brought on with that in mind. Um, we're in it to win it, which means that uh, you know, working nine to five, it's not going to cut it if you want to work at Voy. And it's not what you should expect if you want to work at Voy. And uh, the people that do work in our company, like, we like to work hard because we know that we're doing something that's going to change the world forever. And uh, with that said, though, like, growth shouldn't come at the expense of people's personal health. So uh, as a manager, like, it's super important to also make sure, of course, that in a hyper-growth startup, you encourage your team to take the proper time off so that they can rest, come back refreshed, and really kill it uh, with lots of energy. So we expect a lot for the people that work at Voy, to say the least. But uh, something that we decided to do is also to, in return, make all of our employees shareholders so that we can reap the benefits of our success together. And that, I think, is also imperative. Um, so um, talking a little bit about hiring, I think many of you can probably um, recognize the struggle that is hiring for a tech company today. There's so much competition out there. So I am based in Stockholm, where we have uh, the tech giants of Spotify, King, Klarna. And those companies, like, they do attract a lot of good tech talent. However, those tech giants also have probably nicer offices, better benefits, they probably will pay your engineers a better salary. And uh, most likely they have like a barista or whatever to see to the engineers and the marketeers every coffee need. And uh, you have to compete with that. And when you're a scrappy startup like Boy, um, it can be really tough. But our pitch and what we try to sell to people that come to Voy is that at Voy, you will, if you join now, still be a big part of something fairly small. When you join one of the tech giants, you will be most likely a pretty small piece of something big. And that's what got me leaving Spotify for Voy. And I think it all goes back to the growth mindset. Um, when we're hiring someone, we want to make sure that they are ready for the ride that is Voy. And I usually think about it as, uh, you know, we're playing Champions League. This is my once in a lifetime playing the Champions League final. And when playing a Champions League final, you need to have Champions League players on your team. Um, but uh, what is also important to think about is, uh, you know, you can't hire 11 Slatan Ibrahimovic. Like, Slatan is amazing, we all love him, he's the best but you can't have a team of 11 strikers. It's crucial that you hire people with different backgrounds, different experiences, but th that still are like the best of what they do within their field. That's at least the way I think about it. But being the best, to me, doesn't necessarily mean that you have the most experience, that you come from a certain university, or that you have a certain degree. What I look for in people that I hire for my team is grit. You need to be ready to get your hands dirty and you need to be able to like, work really hard. I also look for um, the right attitude. Um, so again, willingness to like, get shit done. And last but not least, I look for people that are passionate about what we're doing. I look for people that want to join me on the journey to build the green revolution. And uh, I also look for people that are smarter than myself uh, I, or that know other things than I do. 
uh, at work, I almost always feel like the stupidest person in the room, which I think is a great feeling, because that means that I've hired people that know more than myself or that know other things than myself, which means that I can learn every day. It means that my team will challenge me. And it also means that, you know, they will get, uh, they will run their positions in uh, our Champions League team and we will all get closer to winning the game. And I think if you have the above, it almost always ends up being a good hire. Another thing that I think all leaders need to think about is hiring an inclusive and diverse team. And I think this can be tricky, especially if you're in like IT or tech. Um, it, it, it can be a bit hard. Um, in our growth team, because we have so many different functions, like we have uh, UX designers, engineers mixed with marketeers, it's kind of ended up being a quite good mix automatically. And uh, what I really like about that is when everyone has a different perspective, you can always question each other and challenge one another. And in the end, uh, our customer base is super diverse. And uh, the more we represent them within, uh, within our team, the better the product we're going to be able to make for them. Um, and having diverse teams also means making better decisions. And better decisions means more money for us in the end. So, uh, meet uh, my growth team. Um, we are um, a pretty diverse team. Over the past three years, we've gone from being a one-woman uh, show to now being a team of approximately 50 people. Uh, we have our HQ in Stockholm where most of our tech uh, and data and uh, like the scalable parts of the business sit. But then we also have growth marketing managers out in our markets. We have engineers, product owners, product managers. We have a CRM team. We have a performance marketing team. Uh, we have product marketing, copywriters, UX designers, brand designers, analysts. It's a lot of different people and very different people and very diverse people, and this is key. One thing I also get asked about quite a lot is how to build a growth team and like uh, an inclusive team and a uh, like um, integrated team and bringing people together in a post-pandemic world and how to work with those types of teams. And as I mentioned, we have a central growth team in Stockholm, uh, as well as local markets focusing on growth. In the central team, we build the scalable parts of the business. So we build marketing automation, we build uh, um, our dashboards, we build our product, and we work with optimizing um, the scalable parts of the business, building tools, assets, and such that the local markets can use. But it's been super important to us to still keep the local teams to gather local insights and be able to um, act quickly upon market dynamics that might change pretty fast when you're in a hyper growth uh, startup like ours. And I think this also goes back to my previous point of having a diverse team. By having people with local expertise and responsiveness, it means that we can like tailor make hyper-local strategies for every market, and this is really crucial for us. Um, but Voice Growth Team is uh, mainly focused on um, our riders and grow our rider base. But we also have another type of customer at Voy, which is a really important one. Can anyone guess what it is? It's the cities. And the cities are, in the end, um, the ones that are going to give us the license to operate. So it's crucial for us in growth, even though the rider is our main customer, to also have the cities in mind when we set out our strategies. I think, um, you know, it's pretty safe to say that change is needed when it comes to transport. Transport in Europe today stands for 25% of the greenhouse gas emissions. We at Voy, uh, with our e-bikes and e-scooters, are providing a carbon neutral forms of transport to replace these car trips. We've pledged that by 2030, so in nine, eight years, we will be replacing one billion car trips with a more sustainable means of transport. 
we believe that we can do this because there's an incredible demand for our service. It took us seven months to hit our first million rides. Now we're averaging approximately two million rides a week. But uh, we also understand that our service isn't perfect and there's a lot of pain points that comes with, um, you know, <laughs> implementing these new types of transportation networks into cities. Uh, you know, we have everything from bad parking to cluttering to uh, inexperienced riders maybe behaving in a bad way out in the streets. And uh, this is a tension that we need to balance when we think about our growth strategies uh, and find scalable solutions to solve them. And uh, that's what we're doing constantly. And we try to use tech to solve these issues. One example of this is... Uh, you know, that's maybe not so much for rider growth. We've implemented slow speed zones in the cities where we operate, in uh, pedestrian areas, for example, where you can only ride at seven kilometers per hour when you're on an e-scooter. This is something that our users hate, because then you're like going super slow, and uh, everyone walking past you walks faster than you're going on the e-scooter. But it's something that the cities really want, and it's something that's also going to make it better for the people that, you know, in the end, don't want to ride an e-scooter when they're walking in the pedestrian areas. So we've been able to implement this, and we were able to build this type of feature within the first year of launching Boy. And uh, just to give you some comparison, that's something that the car industry has not been able to do in over 100, which I think is uh, pretty shameful, to be honest. Uh, but for us, it's been something that has allowed us, uh, allowed us to grow because it, is, uh, it has provided us with license to operate in cities where this is something that the cities are requesting. So as a growth team, we need to be aware of these challenges when we build our product uh, in order to both, um, both provide good solutions for the city, but also for the rider. So something that I wish that I'd known uh, before starting a growth team, and I would say probably my best tips. Um, Start early on with looking at uh, who in your company are kind of, you know, working with growth. Uh, are they working in the same team? Are they working in different teams? Uh, if they're working in different teams and in different silos, remove those silos and bring those people together instead uh, to create one cross-functional, exciting, dynamic team that can take your startup to a scale up and beyond. Find the people with the real passion to make it happen. Find the people that are passionate about your product. Uh, a growth mindset isn't something that you learn at university. It's something that you either have or you don't. And find those people, because quite often it ends up being them who actually make a difference. Make it a diverse team. Uh, it helps front group think. It will help you make better decisions. It will help you make more money. And then last but not least, read a lot, anything. Not business books, or uh, if you like business books, read business books. I hate business books. I love fantasy and sci uh, science fiction, so I read a lot of that. But uh, uh, it doesn't really matter what you read. Just read anything that's going to help you broaden uh, the way you think, the way you solve problems, and help you get a broader context. And last but not least, uh, and what I wanted to end with today is uh, what's next for the Voy growth team. So, uh, you know, despite of the challenges um, of the global pandemic, 2021 has actually been a really, really good year for Voy. E-scooters and e-bikes have provided a socially distant way of commuting uh, when a lot of people have not been able or not wanted to travel with public transport. And I would also say that with a renewed focus on climate change, people want to make more sustainable choices, and we are providing a service to help them make those choices. For the next year, growth will be a huge opportunity for us from a city and a rider perspective. Um, as you've uh, heard today, we have a lot of different customers the riders, the cities, the politicians, city officials. And uh, for us in growth, it's going to be about 
finding the right efforts to facilitate for all of the above in the city. Uh, it's going to be a big challenge, but it's one that we're really excited to get into. Thank you so much. <laughs>